I wonder if Cleopatra visited Swarovski to restore her clears. I wonder how she would feel about her jewelry. If Kisro, the rule of Persia, spent the night sleeping in your bed, what would he think of his own royal bed? Would Caesar be proud of his luxurious life? Reclining on a couch and fanned by slave girl, if he knew that my living room has a more comfortable reclining chair and an AC unit that can make it feel like an igloo even in a Texan summer, would Qarun strut arrogantly about the keys of his wealth that he needed strong men to carry? If he knew that the keys to my wealth are carried in plastic cards in my wallet and guarded by corporate towers? In the land of Mesopotamia, so mesmerized by their chariots, what would they think of the Saudi of Takrala, of the people of Baghdad and Qurtu, who used to pride themselves at the vastness of collection of their libraries? So the amount of books that can be carried by college students and their tablets, how would they feel? The kings who used to pride themselves on the quickness of their messengers and carriers were introduced to email, text messages. And what's up? What would they think of how we were living? If a Norman, the king of Arabia, who used to drink cold water kept in a special made skin container, and the people used to envy him for that, how would they feel if they saw the water fountain in our masjid? If the Abbasi Khalifa Al Mansur, who used to have his slaves mix hot water with cold water to create a unique bath for himself, and his people used to imagine what that was like. What he would think of trying my jacuzzi, of the people who used to dream about items and search for them all their lives, knew that we simply search and purchase them today on Amazon.com. Of the people who used to travel for months and maybe years to reach their destinations, knew that it takes us only a few hours on planes, trains, or automobiles. My brothers and sisters. We live today better than many of the kings and royals of the past, but we can't see it. We only have eyes for what others have. Remember, every time your eyes wander wide, your heart constricts. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى And do not extend your eyes toward that by which we have given enjoyment to some categories of them. It's but the splendor of the worldly life by which we test them, and the provision of your Lord is better and more enduring. Do not focus on what you don't have; focus on what you do have. Comprehend the following statement with your heart and memorize it on your tongue. When you are grateful to Allah and do what He asks of you, He will give you much more than what you ask.